What is up guys, it's Tetsuya's Modern Warfare here, Gamertag Bandage Chicken, and welcome back to another episode of JTAG Tutorials. So in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to basically run a game that is stored on the computer from your JTAG console. So this is pretty awesome, it really helps out with storage issues. It's something I've been meaning to cover for a long time but I've ne just never really got round to it. But it is a pretty cool uh, feature. Uh, another cool thing that JTAGs can do. So yeah, basically you can store your games all on, you know, your computer's hard drive, and then using, uh, you know, network connection sharing, your console can then access it and actually run the game and stream it over uh, your local area network. So the way this works is, or the best way to get the best results is to get your network set up so that your console is connected to your computer in the fastest way possible so that they so you know the best way is to connect your console to your computer with a ethernet cable so a network cable and then you can use a network bridge or connection sharing uh, on your computer to allow them to share information with each other uh, or you can connect the computer to a router or router and the Xbox also to a computer or, or router with ethernet cables which would be another good way to do it as well. The worst possible way is to be using wireless on both computer and console or wireless on one or the other. Uh, so please if you're using wireless uh, I wouldn't really recommend doing this but uh, yeah if the best way to get the best results is to connect the console to the computer directly with an ethernet cable then you would just go onto computer you would go on to uh, your network, you would go to network and sharing center, change adapter settings, local area connection would be your Xbox if it's connected to the computer with an ethernet cable, uh, your wireless network connection would be your wireless connection to the router from your computer. Uh, so what you would do is you would either select both of them, right click and bridge the connections, or you can right click on wireless network connection, go to properties, uh, click on sharing and allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection and select local area connection as the device you want to allow uh, you want to enable sharing on and if there is no box that allows you to select a network adapter then just check the allow network users to connect through this computer's internet connection and click OK and it should work just fine. Uh, you probably have to reboot the console after doing that though so once you've done that, uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is enable uh, sharing from one computer to another. So in order to do this, you want to go on computer again, you want to select network, you want to go to network and sharing center. And this time you want to choose, you want to choose home group and sharing options. Select change advanced sharing settings, expand home or work. Make sure turn on network discovery is enabled. Turn on file and printer sharing is enabled. Uh, turn on password protected sharing. That needs to be enabled as well. And allow Windows to manage home group connections. So when you have that all in enabled, so it's the same as what I have here, just click save changes and exit out of that. Now you want to create a folder to store all your games in. So I'm going to create a folder, I'm just going to call it Games. And I'm going to cut and paste my two games, Advanced Warfare and Halo 3, into this folder. So I'm going to paste them in here. Make sure there are no spaces. Um, I'm not sure if it really matters uh, for the game folders to have spaces, but make sure that the actual folder that you're sharing is going to have no spaces in it so like I've just got games so there's no spaces in that which will be fine uh, so we can click on properties click on sharing share select your user account in fact before you do this you'll need to make sure that your user account has a password on it so your user account must be password protected um, so you if you don't, haven't got that set up then just create a password on your user account so I'll go net users uh, Lee and then shift eight and then I'll say type of password so I'm going to put 
Xbox is the password, confirm it, type in Xbox again. I've just changed the password on my user account or you can go into control panel, uh, user accounts and family, uh, user accounts and change your password. So just make sure you have a password on your user account and then you can go obviously into properties, sharing, share, select your user account, select read slash write, click share, click the folder, click done and close and that's it. So this folder has now been shared over the network so that other computers on your network can access this folder which will also mean that our Xbox will be able to access that folder on this computer. Uh, so finally what we need to do is add in the Connect X plugin. This is what's going to make everything work. It's what's going to allow the console to actually run the game over the network. Now this is a freestyle dash plugin, not a dash launch plugin. So it needs to go in the plugins folder in your freestyle dash uh, directory. So what we're going to do is connect to it. I'm going to just connect to it over FileZilla, FTP, in fact, or I suppose I could use Xbox 360 Neighborhood if I have it connected. In fact, we'll just connect over uh, Neighborhood. So I think more people tend to use this program even though it's damn slower than FTP. So, right, so we open up our console here. We're going to go into HDD1 or wherever you have Freestyle Dash stored. So go into your Freestyle Dash folder, uh, select plugins, and where you see the Freestyle Dash plugin, that is where you want to put the Connect X plugin. So you want to put it in the same place as the Freestyle plugin. And once you have done that, uh, all you have to do is launch Freestyle Dash. And that's it. So all we've got to do now is add our Connect X settings uh, in Freestyle Dash so that we can connect to this folder on the computer. Uh, some information you'll need is you'll need to know what the computer's uh, PC name or host name is. Uh, so again, you can find that quickly in command prompt by simply typing in host name. And you can see it says Lee-PC is my PC name. Or you can, of course, click on start, right-click computer, go to properties, and you will be able to see the computer name right here. When we're entering it in Freestyle Dash, though, we have to enter it in block capitals, uh, not no lowercase uh, values. So I'll go over to the console now and show you guys what to do from there. Okay, so once you're on to Freestyle Dash, you want to go ahead and click on the settings. Uh, you want to head to plugin settings and you should see that it says connect x plugin is loaded if it says it's not loaded then try rebooting uh, freestyle dash or rebooting the whole console if necessary make sure that the connect x plugin is in the right place in the freestyle dash plugins folder uh, and when it is loaded you want to scroll down to connect x and enter these details to allow it to connect to the computer so we've got to enter the remote PC name which is uh, for me it was Lee dash PC remember it needs to be in caps I'm not sure if it needs to be in caps but I would re definitely recommend putting it in caps uh, PC share name so this is the folder that we have shared on the network which was games so we're going to enter that just in case it's case sensitive, I would enter it in case sensitive. So it was games. Uh, the username is the username of my uh, Windows account, which is just, well, my Windows user account. So that is just Lee. And the password I set, which was Xbox. So that was just the account password that I set. And then just click save settings and it'll say please power cycle console for changes to take effect. That was pretty fast but bear in mind sometimes you click save settings and it'll look like it's frozen for a while. But just wait and then eventually it should hopefully say power cycle the console. So that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to reboot the, the Xbox and once we are done that we can go ahead and continue. 
Alright guys, so here we go, I've rebooted my console, I'm booting back into Freestyle Dash now. Now if it's working, one thing you'll probably notice is that you got you get quite a long black screen before Freestyle Dash actually boots up, um, which is a good indication that XConnect is working. So to check, uh, once you've rebooted the console, you just head into the file manager and you should see a ConX uh, folder showing up and if you click it, you should get the folders that are inside the games. So you can see that the path is con x then lee pc backslash games and there's my advanced warfare folder and my halo 3 folder that are um, currently sitting on my computer. Uh, these folders and these games are not on any local drive on my console. These are stored on my computer. So let's try halo 3 first of all. So in the file manager you just highlight the default.xcx and press the start button on your controller, not A. Press the start button and it should try and boot into uh, Halo 3. So it's streaming this game along the network. So I'm getting a black screen for quite a long time. Streaming this game on the network. But nope, there we go, it is loading. So. That wasn't too long that I had to wait for it to boot up there, it was actually, you know, it wasn't bad considering it's streaming from a, a drive on a, on a computer over in the network, so that is pretty awesome. So we can see that working there, game loading up. Can't seem to skip this for some reason. But yeah, there we go. This, is a, this game is actually running and it's on my computer right now, not my console. So there you go guys, that is it working. Now another thing I wanted to just sort of uh, check out before I went off here uh, is to add it as an actual game path. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that in Neighbourhood now. So we'll just launch Freestyle Dash back up. And again it will probably, oh no it was quite fast that time, that's good. So what we'll do is we'll actually add it in as a game path now and see if that works. So we'll add Advanced Warfare which is again sitting on uh, on the computer. So if I go into my Xbox 360 games right now I don't have my external hard drive plugged in that has all my games on it so I've only got a few games in here. So let's go ahead and add Advanced Warfare that's on my computer. So we'll go into Content Settings, Manage Game Paths, Add a Game Path with Y, Change Path, Select Connect X, Advanced Warfare, Give it a sec to load because Advanced Warfare has a lot of files in there. And we'll press Y. And we'll set the scam depth to about 5. And we'll go for Xbox 360. Uh, and we'll press X to save. And then down the bottom you can see it's downloading the cover. HTTP, 6 items left. It's downloading that cover and the information about the game. If I go on Xbox 360 games I now have Advanced Warfare showing up and I can now run it from inside Freestyle Dash and it's stored on my computer which I still think is pretty damn awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch it and before I do uh, what I'm going to do is bring up the task manager on my computer I'll put it alongside. If you go into your task manager by control alt delete and selecting task manager and then selecting I believe it's the network tab or something like that you'll be able to actually see the network traffic so we'll see uh, how much data has been transferred between the computer and the console while we're running this game so I'll start running it now and you'll be able to see so that was actually very fast it's you know gone straight into advanced warfare after me running it and I can't, I honestly can't get over how quickly and responsive it is considering the fact that it's not even, the game files are not even on the same device that I'm playing it on right now. Uh, so that is just pretty damn awesome here. So we'll go into multiplayer and you'll be able to see the network traffic, normal game. Not actually connected to Headspots Live right now anyway, but I still have my stealth plugin uh, loaded. Uh, so we'll go local play, see if we can maybe set up a few bots or something, we'll just set up some bots, uh, whatever, start game, Let's see how long the, the map takes to load here. So 
it's stuck in the middle for quite a little while. So it is noticeably taking a little bit longer to load than it maybe would do if you were obviously running off a hard drive. But to be honest, if you were just running like on a retail Xbox and you were running the game from the disc, you didn't actually have like the game installed to the hard drive. I know you kind of have to do that with new games now, but if you're running a normal game off the disc, this is probably the kind of speed that you would get. So obviously it's not as fast as if you had it installed to the hard drive, but it's not too bad considering it's streaming it over the network. So the game loads and you know we can go ahead and so as you can see the game is loaded up and everything seems to be working absolutely fine. So that is basically it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's another cool little trick that you can do with your, your JTAG or RGH console. So if you liked the video feel free to leave a like, comment if you have any questions, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I will hopefully see you guys next time.